Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the European cross-up webinar. And um, Italian, <laughs> Italian data, as usual, is always running late. Um, the gun squawk is in my ear. He's even saying that. He goes, well, we're running a little bit late. You know, on this show, Italian data is never on time. <laughs> so nothing yet across the tape on um, Italian CPI. We did get... Um, Earlier today, <clears throat> we did get UK claimant data, unemployment rate 4.9%, employment change uh, down 144K. They were expecting down 250. Wow. Um, we got French CPI came in in line. Actually, yeah, it came in line at two tenths. We're supposed to get the Italian CPI data. Nothing has come across the tape yet. Um, then reserve asset totals, that's pretty low tierish, I believe, a uh, year zone. And then we do get uh, dairy prices out of New Zealand. Uh, NASDAQ kind of pushing up a little bit higher here. Later on today, you know, we didn't have any data in the US. Um, we do get Canadian housing starts at 815 Eastern, I'm in Central, so that's what's shown seven. Okay, Italian data just hit the road, hit King. It just comes in. And I just did ask on the squawk, so it's not like the Reuters is late. So it came in down one tenth right in line. Or unrevised from the flash, so no change, no change. And Let's see, New York Fed manufacturing at 8.30 with import-export prices, Canadian manufacturing sales also at 8.30. And then, of course, at 9.15, industrial production capacity utilization, and that'll be it. So New York Fed manufacturing at 8.30 Eastern. And, of course, the manuf Canadian manufacturing sales along with housing starts coming out 15 minutes earlier. And, of course, uh, New Zealand dairy prices. Um, trying to look what happened to my little floating chart. Hold on a moment. There it is. There we go. And your dollar's over there hanging, hanging up close to the highs. Um, Dominic Rob, uh, negotiations are still ongoing. Okay, no news there. I just came across the squawk. Hold on. Let's see. Um, cable at 33.09. We did get that jump yesterday. Boy, pretty big, nice rally from when we closed on Friday, but although we held that area down here, uh, that wasn't our bias chart support on Friday, but I'm just saying we held that area because that was a key area here, the 31.51. You know how it is about the levels. And then we saw a nice big rally yesterday. Uh, which got about 34. But remember, we see, I think our buy chart support was, I mean, resistance was 3402. So I think it was 3402. Let me take a look here. Bear with me. Yeah, it was 3404. So not bad. Although we got up to 3442, we blew some stops out. And then uh, we ended up closing ultimately under 3382. So still keeping that bearish slant. Uh, and we're relatively quiet today. And honestly, Dollar, this thing looks like it's running out of gas. I mean, it looks like it's of its last fumes. And there we are. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Uh, 
we're still pretty holding pretty steady here. We saw that nice gap from the Sunday session. And if you look on the two hour chart, it kept us still pretty firm looking here. Solid close. It would, I did have resistance. This is actually an existing resistance. Can't speak. An existing resistance level. Although, like I said, I was making sure I wasn't going to stand away on a Monday. Actually, it's a bit cautious to the fault, but I kind of didn't mind standing by just to look because, like I said, we had this solid close and another close up in here. So I really thought we'd make it up to 78%, and I was willing to do some business at the 78%. But I was pretty, pretty cautious um, only because we had the stimulus headline. We'd already had the COVID. They are already giving up COVID vaccines. They are handing those out. So everything was pretty much bullish, and I felt like the market was really open to really blowing some moves up in here, and I didn't want to stand the way, although the S&P itself had been – we had started fading at that point. Uh, but eventually came in, the only had a couple of regrets here is had a, a shooting star here, which not shooting star, I mean a hanging man up here on the 30 minute. So we did see a pair back, what a great hanging man, but still hanging man. And when we came back, look, this is a perfect hanging man. Once again, the resistance was definitely quantifiable here, but once, it, but they were, the talk was uh, Pelosi and Manisha were to speak. I don't know how the market wanted to play it. And also, although um, we're getting a little bit tired, the uh, the Fang Man were, still, were at good prices, although we were a bit stretched, but we're still holding pretty solid. I did not want to push that. Later in the day, though, we did see a nice kind of fade. Potentially could have gone with that. But honestly, like I said, I didn't mind just kind of hanging out and just seeing how it laid out. And we don't forget we also rolled over into September and you can see here, we're still holding steady here. And this is the only thing I will say is I said that yesterday uh, or a couple of days ago. I kind of like having this focus on the 30-minute, although I still have the five-minute. And if it's appropriate, I certainly don't mind in trying to scalp around. But this kind of keeps me, has kind of saved me having the 30-minute and two-hour more emphasized because when I did have some uh, trades last week, which uh, came in at wrong times, um, this allowed me – to keep a little bit bigger focus. Now that sounds kind of crazy because it's only a five minute, I mean a 30 minute or two hour, but obviously when you're trading these indexes and they move so high, it's, you know, I'm not really interested in looking and trying to trade off a day. And then, you know, you can quickly, if you're trading off a day chart and you got bearish, well, you can quickly be down a couple of hundred, hundred handles uh, the way this NASDAQ's moving. So that's what I'm saying is this kind of uh, saved my bacon last uh, week, keeping me in a position when, Part of five that didn't look so great at all, and uh, from a, that perspective, was able to stay in that and actually come out okay. Um, looking here at the S and P's, uh, boy, we are still making new highs. Now that wasn't the case yesterday. Yesterday we were really we we uh, made up there, and then we started fading. And even though it was fading, the Nasdaq was still holding up really well. But as we faded more, left the Nasdaq susceptible, and that's what I'm saying. It could have gone with these moves here thinking, okay, well, we've really seen this fade in the S&Ps. It's going to have some drag on it. And we did see it pair back, but you can see we're moving higher. And look at the S&P up here. We're actually just coming back up to this level right in here, which is going to be, this is not as impressive as it really looked, is 3666. I have not updated the same day VWAP on this. So same day VWAP is going to be down here. And this would probably this would actually be two day VWAP now, where this is now. So yeah, we'd be coming up towards two day VWAP. Uh, it's still looking pretty solid. Uh, let take a look. We'll take a look at what Gold's doing. I don't really pay that much attention to it anymore. Um, and that's that keeps my hands full, especially because, like I said, uh, since I tracked the Fang Man across the board, whether it's on the daily or two hour, 30 minute, keeps my hands pretty full, but it is very helpful in that sense. Um, here's a daily. Um, looking good right now. If we look at this on a two hour chart. Oh boy, this looks good solid move here. Look at that. Yeah, impressive. And as long as we can, on a two-hour chart, we can maintain above 1849. We'll be okay. 
but it's already had such a pretty good problem as it is. Um, let's go and take a look at the news. Well, I kind of like having this floating chart around here. It helps able to highlight some things easier. There it is on the daily. So the Australian dollar retreats from two and a half year highs. The Australian dollar eased against the green back on Tuesday, retreating from a two and a half year highs hit in the previous session, but as the US dollar found some support against a falling Chinese yuan. The Aussie dollar, often used as a liquid proxy for risk, fell 2.7% against the dollar after having it hit its highest level since 2018 at 75.78 on Monday. Oh, I was just looking, I was like, 2.7%? Are you crazy? No, it was one quarter percent, 0.27, not 2.7. Uh, the New Zealand Kiwi was lower at 7.74 on Tuesday after... Finishing the previous session, boy, and then the Kiwi really, I mean, uh, when you open this a little bit higher, that body's a little bit wider to be a gravestone doji. It's almost gravestone doji-esque. But if you look at the Kiwi, wow, that's two back-to-back -back gravestone dojis. Look at that. Um, we're watching signs of the stimulus uh, deal and vaccine news, but I think what you've seen today is the uh, dollar one has rallied. Like, um, I think that's been at the epicenter and reverberated across the board, said Chris Weston at Melbourne Brokerage Pepperstone. The won eased to a near two week low against the dollar on Tuesday after the central bank made its biggest ever injection of medium term funds. They've been doing quite a bit of that lately. Uh, Chinese Statistics Bureau said on Tuesday it could even target, uh, could even make, uh, could make targeted policy adjustments as the economy improves. Data on earlier separately showed China's factory output grew at the fastest pace in 20 months in November. Mm. The market might have been hoping for more, said Stephen Dooley, Westpac strategist. Uh, losses for the Australian dollar extended after the Chinese data, notably industrial production, were reported in line with expectations. Remember, we pushed higher on Sunday because uh, they announced even more Australian dollar bond purchases. I think it's like 1.2 billion or something. I don't remember. I'd have to look at the headline, but um, that gave it that extra boost on uh, in the Sunday session. The Australian dollar has benefited in recent weeks from soaring prices for iron ore, the country's top export, and from signs of an economic rebound at home. Australia's labor market is recovering faster than expected to an easing in coronavirus restrictions and a rebound in consumer spending for the country's central banks, said on Tuesday, while promising to focus on lower unemployment. So let's go to the next one. Hmm. Dollar heavy amid stimulus progress and pound buoyed by Brexit hopes. The dollar traded near a two and a half year lows against major peers on Tuesday as demand for the safest assets flagged and amid progress towards. Um, to agreeing to the U.S. fiscal stimulus and optimism for a Brexit deal. A $908 billion bipartisan COVID relief plan will be split into two packages. The person briefed on the matter said, raising hopes that at least a large part of the plan that already has been has bipartisan support will be approved. The big picture is that 2021 whole looks increasingly promising for global growth. And while the use will certainly be part of that, the global inflation trade is going to support the risk-sensitive currencies like the Australian dollar, said Westpac strategist Sean Callow. The dollar is likely to be in a group of laggards along with the likes of the yen. Across the Atlantic, European Union, Brexit negotiator Michael Barnier said the ceiling, a trade pact with Britain, was still possible, so in hopes that a deal can be reached, which is days to avert a turbulent exit from the UK, uh, for the UK from the Brexit, uh, from the trade block at the end of the month. The British pound rose against the dollar to 33.32. After jumping on uh, eight tenths on Monday, it reached a two and a half year high at 35.40 early this month. The grading greenback slipped 
uh, one tenth of percent to 21.50 per euro, trading a two year and a half year low at 21.77, touched again on Monday. COVID vaccine rollouts in the US and Britain also buoyed risk sentiment, but optimism was tempted, tempered by spikes in the life infection and death rates. London will go into a tighter lockdown amid the discovery of a variant of the virus. The dollar index was little changed at 90.70 after Monday sinking below 90.41, a level unseen since April 2018. Um, yeah, and actually, our, we didn't do pretty bad. Our bias chart support on the dollar index was um, no, no one that great. It was 90.61, and the low was 90.39, I think it was. So, uh, but we did get a rebound a little bit. Uh, the currency added to 104.12 and a half on the yen, another traditional safe haven asset. With the rollout of uh, vaccines starting in the U.S. and the U.K., we expect shutdowns to reduce uh, in frequency and intensity, allowing the dollar to resume its downtrend. Commonwealth Bank of Australia currency analyst Joe Caperso wrote in a client note. So there's that. We're going to get started with the analysis. And there was another little, I guess we'll just catch this one real quick. Starting stabilizes after the Brexit deal helps rebound. The pound stabilized on Tuesday after Monday's sharp rebound as market participants grew more optimistic. Um, then rebounded to a high of 34.44 on Monday. Uh, following its rebound yesterday, Story is now stabilized, penciling in lower odds of a negative outcome for the UK-EU trade negotiations. The post-weekend progress in negotiations is now priced into the pound, they said, adding that they expect the euro starting to stabilize around 9,100 in Tuesday's session. And let's see if there's any additional news on here. Speculative position on the pound turned net bullish in the week of December the 8th. We covered that yesterday. According to the weekly futures data, and implied volatility gauge having dipped down from last Friday's peak. Our view, once again, is that a deal is more likely than not, and the risk tilted for real, full resolution by the end of the week, said uh, wrote Deutsche Bank strategist Sharias Gopal. Cont confirmation of a deal would remove one of the la largest lingering risks for the pound and should allow the market to... Uh, at a minimum, take out the increased negative rates pricing of the last few days. Bank of England meets on uh, Thursday. Alan said they, the risk of negative rates being introduced in 2021 depends on the impact of the Brexit on the UK economy. So with that, we'll get the analysis. And we'll pull this up on the weekly because we can keep that same perspective. As you can see here, here's that key weekly level of 2145. We have the 2144, the 78%. Remember, the eyes been as high as the 2176. Um, Uh, some news coming over about the Japanese yen and the Ministry of Finance. Um, that's why I was pausing. The guy is still squawking in my ear. Um, you're posted again on Monday, but was unable to close above 2145, the weekly level. That's why I put it on this weekly chart.
expecting Japanese revenues, tax revenues to decline by 55, 5 million yen. I think it's more than that. Okay, anyway, uh, resistance is going to be the 2176. You know, that's our recent high with support remaining or support. We moved it up to 2068. So hold on. Move on to cable. So cable posted a solid rally on Monday before closing sub 3382. Resistance on Tuesday will be 3248. There's our support. Well, I only mean so resistance. Obviously, it's going to be support with resistance at 3407. So let's go here. And we just moved it up just a hair. It was 3404, moving up to 3407. And on to the Aussie dollar. So the Aussie uh, posted uh, two um, near back-to-back -back gravestone dojis. The pair is stretched, and resistance on Tuesday will be 74.42. The heck is wrong with me? Something's going on. So the support, I don't want to say that so it's going to be right there, 74.42. And resistance is going to be the body right here. And there'll be, let's call it 75.50. Actually, I think I was going to put it for high, but we'll leave it like that. Let's go on to the, uh, to the Kiwi. So Kiwi, like its cousin, posted two back-to-back -back Rosestone Dojis. You can see that here. Right here. The pair is vulnerable to a pullback. Resistance will be 7105 with support at 7015. And on to the dollar cab. Mm. I am running a step slow this morning. So the dollar cab is attempting to form a bottom. Weekly support is 27.35 and continues to be support because remember we had that from yesterday. Um, and resistance will remain 28.20. So there's not going to be any, any uh, changes here. You can see that. Remains the same. And they are trying to form that bottom. Our weekly support, remember, is 27.35. They did get as low as, as, low as 27.19 yesterday, but they did rebound off of those lows. Uh, now into the dollar peso. So the dollar peso is attempting a rebound off the bottom with four consecutive positive days. Boy, look at that. One, two, three, four. Resistance on Tuesday will be 2032 with support of 2009. It wasn't too far off. I think yesterday's high was what? At 2023 or 2024, so it wasn't too, too far off. Uh,
So the Dolly Yen took a nasty dip on Monday to 351 before rebounding above 4104. <clears throat> Resistance will be 429 with support at 380. On to the dollar index. This dollar looks terrible. So the dollar index took a slip to 90.39 before staging a mild recovery. Support on Tuesday will be 90.46 with resistance at 90.96. On to the cross rates. Hmm. We've pulled back a little bit further and we had 7308. I still like the 7308 and resistance. Um, the 7014, I don't think we're going to, the Kiwi's already run out of gas. Okay. So resistance is just going to be yesterday's high, which is right there, 7377. Yeah, I mean, the Kiwi really looks like it's on its last fumes. And the Aussie's not far behind. If we went for the bond buying program, I think we, that's twice last week we had them rally on bond buying program uh, headlines. So let's go to the Euro pound. Oh, boy. Nice little rebound here. Holy smokes. I actually took this dip down here, came down to support. I'm not sure if that was our support. Yeah, that one, uh, let me see. Our support was 994. They dipped below that, but they came right here into this level of support. Always trust the levels. Um, and then saw a nice sharp rebound. And look, we're adding on to it. Resistance is going to be right there. 91.53. Kind of all over the place. Can't really even say it's bearish. Hard to say it's bullish. Um, for now, we'll say it's trading in a range. And support. I'm going to dip back. We'll go with, you see these two wicks coming across and kind of close to a body too. So that wick comes at 90.78. Onto the Euro odd. Coming off of that weekly weekly support level of 60.65. Kind of make a stand here. Had these two weeks here, almost close to a tweezer. So probably get a little bit more follow through. We'll go with this for resistance. See this body here? That kind of confluence is right there with that wick. So that would be resistance. 6205. Uh, support. Uh, we'll take a look at a two hour chart. Right there. See it coming across here. So let's go with 6098. And on to the Euro Kiwi. We do have dairy auction today. You can see we're right here at this body. You see that? 
Uh, I almost like to give it a little bit more room. Mm. Not sure if I want to go all the way up to these wicks. We'll take a look at the two on a chart. See this body right there, that body right there. We'll go with that. 7238. With support, right there where we're at, 7150. And on to the ASEAN. Oh boy, we're pretty quiet. A uh, resistance is going to be that body right there. Call it 7852. With support, we'll just go to this quick. I don't think that's going to hit that today. If you look right now, you got the this body close and that body close right there, 7808. And the low is just a hair above that. Um, I would look for this potentially come down here this quick. And that's going to be 7792. Let's give it. Aussie's acting pretty tired as well. On to the guppy. This is all over the place. Um, but on a short-term basis, the bot, the body right there, because it just takes out the stops just below that level. So we're looking at thirty-seven eighty-five. And on the upside, we'll just go with the body right there, which is going to be right there. It's called 3904. And lastly, with the sterling odd. Got this double wick here, and we talked about um, the odd kind of run out of gas a little bit. Let's just look at a two hour chart. Nothing to really hang your hat on. You see right there, this low here, and then a rebound up to here, that'll be the resistance. You just call it 7,800. And support right there at that wick, 75.96. And I just say that body. Well, that'll do it, and uh, Mira says to take a look at Platinum. Okay, we can take a look at Platinum. Let's take a little bit longer time frame up. <clears throat> So look at the weekly. We made a stand here. There's a little one there. Let's see here, look on the daily. Yeah, we're still holding up in here. Look at that, we talked about that, that first dip down here. Remember if we dropped down to 990? So it's still holding up okay. We took a dip, but we held right there, that thousand, basically it's a thousand six, thousand five right there. So that, that level still holding if we pull this back. You can see that body right there. That's, we even had the little arrow there. 
that's the support and you can see it's holding it and we said that if we break we said on the first run they may try and make a hold here and then if they dip back 990 is key but you, you, what i told you was you didn't want to get a close below this because then that opens that challenge not that much further but to 990 well they're doing pretty good holding this so what the bulls need to do is they need to get above to get things going again need to get above 1038 they need to get above 1038 that's not that far away uh it looked a little bit bleak here you see right here this bar they kind of held her own yesterday with a bit of a uh Almost like a mini, uh, a mini legged doji. So in that situation, generally sort of long legged doji, but bulls don't have control, bears don't have control. You finish in the middle. What's been the prevailing direction has been down, so you do a little counter trend back up. But that's not that wide of a range. But that's where we stand on platinum. And with that, um, we'll call it a day. Uh, you can see here, Nasdaq is still pushing up a little bit higher. See here, and I still think there's a chance we went up to 78%. Um, we'll see what happens. I think it looks like it's in this zone here between that 12,575 ish to 12,596. I Maybe mean, we'll get tired. But once again, when you're looking at an event where it's a more of a headline like the COVID uh, stimulus talks, how far do they really push it? Hard to say. I mean, uh, Fangman stocks. Although a bit overextended, a little bit tired, still holding it relatively well. So uh, we'll just see how it goes. But uh, that's all we have for today. And thanks for joining us here at the European Crossover Webinar.